Jose has made a very important contribution to my personal life because you know, he was my advisor. And he also made a very important contribution to the infrared uh, astronomy because he was, he was uh, involved in the IRS uh, mission, so uh, he was part of the discovery of the infrared sky. And since then, he worked a lot on uh, space missions in the infrared. Kobe, ISO, Spitzer, and I was working on Planck, on polarization, and uh, that's why he's here at the street, working to probably take myself up here on the component suppression problem of the Planck. And today he's going to uh, talk about a totally different topic on uh, Spitzer observations of uh, liquid hydrogen in the galaxy. Thank you, Michael. Then I would like to thank uh, everyone here, and especially uh, uh, Dick, who is not here, and uh, Michael, for listening to this and us so kindly. I really appreciate it. So, uh, you can walk in back and still do something else on the side. Yeah. Then, then you not for very much longer. This is work I've done in the last uh, few years with a group of people who have, which I have listed here, including. Uh, a former PhD student who is now the book at Caltech and a uh, PhD student who is here at the And uh, so, so I will present various, various papers, which, which <coughs> some of them are just being completed and coming out. So when I think about the universe, there are, there are two, and uh, its structure, I think there are two uh, key steps that we, uh, we have an under on. Uh, what, what I call the dark universe, and the dark matter is a dark energy which, which creates this uh, cosmic web on which we, which we are able to modify through uh, numerical simulations with the action of gravity. And then there is a big step forward, and there is uh, this uh, fascinating uh, picture that we, we got from the above. And with much detail after that, we will get by looking at the universe of the galaxy. And, and it, it's a tremendous problem uh, to understand how you go from this. Uh, dark universe to this uh, luminous universe, which, which relates to the directly to us. This, this is a difficult problem because it involves the uh, nonlinear physics of the uh, barrier. So it's hard to put it uh, just like this in computers. And the observations themselves are very difficult to interpret because uh, uh, they don't uh, really give a direct access to what you like. So there are many open questions uh, which are around this problem, and, and uh, the main one is uh, so somehow the variants are going to respond to the hierarchical situation of the dark matter, which is driven by, by gravity. And uh, this, 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 this question, uh, we know that we don't understand it because there are, there are many outstanding problems in our understanding of uh, observations of galaxies, and, and, and I have listed only uh, two of them, but uh, it's, it could, it could, there could be a very long list of problems. And, uh, uh, something Jean Puget said uh, on his talk uh, last week that uh, 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 at high redshift we see the reverse of the hierarchical structuration of dark matter, what of this formation seems to be occurring in very massive galaxies, we don't understand why. And in the local universe, we, we have evidence that the star formation, the galaxy formation, star formation has been very inefficient. We find the galaxies only a very small fraction of the variants which should be there, and uh, so very few of them have been transformed into stars. So we don't know where, where the others go. And, and so this is a, a lot of astrophysics is behind this, to answer this question. It's not because it's a big it's a big it's, it's a big undertaking in which involves a lot of uh, distinct observations and uh, theoretical aspects. And I'm going to concentrate on one which is connected to uh, one very quick and it's to understand uh, the energetics of the core gas because it's eventually this core gas which is going to, to lead to star formation and this is the visible part of the, of the galaxy. So in this core gas, now the, we find it in, in galactic disk and that's where it forms from. So the, the outline of, of my talk uh, will be uh, two main ideas and uh, it will be two parts. And, uh, I'm going to, uh, to focus on the energetics. When I talk about the energetics, the question I, I'm, I'm facing is uh, all the agents of galaxy evolution, uh, which are mergers, gas accretion, feedback, the formation of bound clouds where stars can form. 
all of this, all of this process releases energy. And uh, I think few people are really uh, uh, studying this. Where, where does this energy go? Where uh, can we observe it? And whenever there is energy, it's going to be dissipated, it's going to produce uh, some photons which we can hope to be observed. And, uh, and so this is the question how, how does this uh, energy dissipation occur? Uh, and what is its impact on the molecular gas in galaxies, which, which is uh, the step? The required step to come to come down. And, and I'm going, so I uh, took really two parts. The, the, the first, uh, this is basically what I'm going to cut to. That's already what I'm going to tell you. Uh, I'm going to use observations of the H2 directly, the main, the main molecule of molecular gas. And I will show you that many, many cyclotons in this is the trend of energy dissipation. So we have an observable where which we can use quantify this question. Uh, and uh, it, it, it complements what most people do. Most people uh, use trace of that CO of the molecular gas mass. I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on one which quantifies the energy dissipation. Uh, I will show you to the, some observations that these energy dissipations uh, it, uh, actually it, it's the source, the, uh, actually the source of, uh, of formation of molecular hydrogen. Uh, it's what produces the gas which eventually we can start. And, and that, that uh, this dissipation involves a, a turbulent energy cascade. This is the idea, and that is, okay, this cascade uh, uh, maintains, uh, the uh, keeps the gas very turbulent, and sometimes this is a quenching star formation. And, and the, in the last part, I will, do, I will present some new results, which is the last, the very latest work I've been doing, where we try to connect this to the star formation right? and where to show that uh, the link between the energy dissipation and the star formation. So this is this is a, the first part of, uh, of my talk and this is uh, uh, two ideas which I have uh, uh, to uh, describe and I'm going to illustrate the observations these three aspects. So first, uh, most, much of what is done uh, on some functions in the universe and I guess it's summarized in this, uh, in this platform which is from a recent paper of Provost. Uh, uh, there is a large compilation of data which is uh, basically connecting, connecting uh, uh, the star formation rate to the surface density of molecular gas. This was started a long time ago by uh, and it was it followed up an, an original idea about uh, Schmidt, and that there is a, a relation between the two. So the more the more we have, the more And uh, now this used to be done in the Milky Way and in the, in the local universe galaxies, and now this is being extended up to the high redshift galaxies. And uh, there is uh, so there is a clear relation, but there is uh, some scatter and, and uh, the way it's, it is interpreted is still a very big uh, debate and with no, uh, no real uh, theoretical understanding. It's more, the models are more phenomenolog phenomenological and they try to relate scales. So, so in some of these plots actually you, you combine uh, clouds in the Milky Way with galaxies where because there are clouds in the Milky Way which have so that densities which are probable to migrated galaxies and you try to by combining this observation to be clever about what what uh, what this what this means, why why is there such a relation, and, and eventually that what people are after is some phenomenological uh, model of, of star formation, which you can include in uh, 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 numerical simulations of galaxy formation, because the, the detailed physics of molecular gas cannot be cannot be directly computed with the, the big simulations, and like uh, one would like to have some kind of phenomenology which will be introduced to predict where, where and, and how galaxies uh, acquire the values and from stars. And, and some key ideas are here. Uh, at the end, it's always star formation is, a, is everywhere in efficient. In efficient. And then some of the models here would say that uh, it's known that 1% one, one, one of the molecular gas uh, uh, form by, uh, is transforming to stars within one three point time. So it's, it's a low star formation that you should see. Uh, the molecular clouds are transient directly in the system, so the gas which doesn't, the gas which is not turning to stars, uh, 
uh, will, uh, will be uh, dispersed uh, before you can form new stars. So you have to keep forming, to actually maintain star formation, you have to keep, keep forming molecular molecule contacts. And, uh, and, and at the end, we are always left with this question, what, 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 uh, what is really the key physics which regulate the formation of molecular gases and the star formation efficiency? And for a long time, I think we, we know who is uh, guilty and we know uh, what we should understand, but it's still not easy to, uh, to reach a solution. But, but uh, uh, the solution somewhere is related to the energy. So, so the molecular gas is not going to start with this yeah, it's wander around the table. If the disruptor, the clouds are disrupted, they are not long lived, and they, they, you continue to compound with the fact that so most most of this diagram I show you is mostly based on observation with CO. Some some observations with other molecules. But the idea here is that we see that you have a molecule which has a very low energy levels, and you can trace uh, the, the very cold molecular gas. And the, have transitions which, which are at low, at low temperature and, and they, uh, they are uh, excited by the conditions in very, in very cold gas. And those, those transitions which are uh, observed to uh, uh, radio telescopes in major millimeter and parameters, uh, so uh, the idea that they provide you with an estimate of the, of the gas mass because, because the bulk the of the regular gas is cold. And, but the main constituent of the, of the clouds is not uh, this trace molecule, it is what, uh, it is an hydrogen molecule, and this hydrogen molecule, since it's a, it's a light molecule, it has uh, also, it, it has a, its rotational states at much higher energy. And so in most, most of the core gas, uh, those transitions uh, cannot be excited. We, we don't get to see uh, this gas because the, uh, the, 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 all the collisions are not not provide enough energy to break the molecule to an exact level. Because the first uh, transition is the 2 0 transition, which, uh, which occurs over the state that I have on the But at the, at the same time, this molecule is by far the most abundant. So if you if you deposit energy in a molecular cloud and you enough to heat it to these temperatures, it becomes right away uh, the dominant coolant. And since these lines are forbidden, the, the the radiation can go away, so it's, it's, it's a very uh, efficient uh, coolant as soon as you deposit energy uh, in, the, in the cloud. So it's, a, it's really the, the molecule to observe the H2 energetics. And so those lines are not easy to observe, you have to observe them uh, from space. And so it's, uh, what, uh, this observation was started in the galaxy with uh, ISO and, and a lot of results came away from, uh, from Spitzer. And in my talk I will also show uh, Selections which were done from the ground base. But there, there you access very fine lines which come from uh, uh, vibration in the second state. So, uh, uh, a lot of the, start, the starting point of the study was, was the sort of serendipitous discovery which we made with, uh, with, with Spitzer, is that we, we discovered uh, this plot to very well. But uh, if you look at, at, the, at the Milky Way or uh, uh, normal star from galaxy, like the six like the saffron, the, the spectra in the, in the medium infrared are dominated by these uh, dust features. You, so you, have, you have a lot of UV photons, and uh, 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 this is the dominant uh, outcome in terms of power and this wavelength. But uh, we discovered uh, a set of galaxies which which highlight some uh, some different aspects of the energetics of, 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 the, of the galaxies in general. Uh, but, so they are template objects. To uh, the gas physics. And in those, in those, in those sources, uh, you don't see at all uh, dust, so there is probably very little star formation, very little uh, the, the light. And of course, the spectra show only the, the gas lines, and which are just fixed here, which is uh, the molecular light of lines. And so so uh, this is illustrated in this, uh, in this diagram where we compare the, the intensity of the dust feature with the intensity of the two lines, and you see that uh, the objects which are several orders of magnitude this ratio of higher than the normal galaxy. So, so uh, what, uh, this, uh, this line emission comes from uh, shocks. So, so it's 
well, this ratio is really measuring uh, some uh, ratio between uh, mechanical power and stop emission power, which produces UV and things like that. So you have here are some objects which are completely dominated by uh, mechanical energy. And uh, what, so we, I will show you some examples of these objects and uh, some of which are local and especially resolved. And, and why is this significant? Because the mass of gas which is, being, uh, which is necessary to account for this emission can be very high. In some systems, you have the masses which are comparable to the full molecular hydrogen mass. And, and this is very significant because this, this gas, which is warm, uh, has a very uh, short cooling time. It's about 10,000 years. So if you want to keep that much mass, which is that warm, you need to keep, you need to keep uh, uh, injecting uh, energy. So there are systems which, which actually are processing a lot of energy. And the signature of this processing is this uh, molecular hydrogen, this warm molecular hydrogen. So some, some, some of the systems which, which have been uh, uh, are quite close to us. So uh, this is uh, the famous M82 uh, Star Wars Galaxy, which is a very beautiful wind, which has been seen in X-ray and uh, and uh, uh, H-alpha gas, which has also been now uh, uh, we have found that it's dusty, you see there, and that it has a molecular hydrogen all over. So a lot of the a lot of the gas in the wind is uh, is uh, molecular gas, and here so the the source of energy which is producing this molecular gas in the field or in the wind is the, the starburst here, which is uh, uh, creating an outflow, and the outflow is, is interacting with gas which is in the, in the field of the galaxy, which is which was brought by tidal interaction. The galaxy is in a, in, a, in a small group, and this interaction is actually dissipating the energy. So, a lot, actually, a lot of the dissipation in the wind is actually occurring through molecular hydrogen line emission. And possibly most of the mass in the table the is in this molecular hydrogen component, which, which was until very recently uh, not known. And this is a near, near infrared image which shows the distribution of molecular hydrogen in, in, the, in the disk of the galaxy. So, the, so to go to another extreme, this is a, a cooling flow. This is a bright uh, uh, cluster, central cluster galaxy uh, in Perseus. And uh, this image was, was done uh, uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, discovered this kilometric uh, uh, structure around the galaxy at one stage of the, this is about uh, more than 100 kiloparsec from the galaxy, and it was discovered by uh, H alpha imaging. So at the beginning, one saw that this was uh, just uh, ionized gas, which, which was formed out of the galaxy of the intracluster gas. But it was quickly realized both from the speed spectroscopy and the uh, CO observation that, that most of the mass here is molecular. The chat file on the skin at the surface of the cloud. So, again, this is an example where probably the energy injection of like the black hole at the center of the galaxy is interacting interact with the gas in the cluster and producing this uh, H2 formation and uh, uh, H2 in the sky. And this is the cooling process by which the gas uh, in the halo is, is uh, brought to. to uh, in, into the galaxy and feed more star formation. Another, another uh, spectacular object which I'm going to focus more on is because I think the, the, the astrophysics of it is, is, is simpler to model. This is, uh, uh, for people who know, uh, nearby galaxies, it's a well known object. It's, it's called the Stefan's Quintet. So it's a small group of galaxies which have been uh, interacting, bringing a lot of matter into the halo. And there is a, this pair of two galaxies which is uh, entering at very high speed into the group. So the, so the previous interactions have, have brought uh, big tidal arms into the halo, and these two galaxies are colliding into, the, into these tidal arms at a velocity of 1,000 kilometers per second. So there is a, a giant shock which, which has the side of the galaxy, which was first discovered through radio emission and X-ray, because it's a very violent process. And, and the unexpected and uh, surprising discovery uh, again of Spitzer is that the, actually this shock, uh, if you make a big spectrum spectrum, again, you see that, uh, maybe the molecular hydrogen line going to that uh, in the start mission. So it, uh, it's, it's again an example where a very violent process, uh, bringing a lot of mechanical energy, is actually producing uh, a lot of molecular hydrogen, and this molecular hydrogen is involved in the dissipation process. And the, the, 
the line pooling to H2 uh, is, is uh, larger than the X-ray emission from the subject. So it, you get, but, uh, the shock speed is very, is very large, but you, you get more energy uh, dissipate, uh, dissipation through uh, molecular hydrogen than through plasma. You know, like the C, C plus emission. Yeah, uh, we have a proposal on the shock to do this very accurately. So it's a bit that will be brisk. Uh, so uh, this is an interesting system because we see the, uh, so one aspect of what, what I told you. Uh, we see that all of the energy of the collision actually has, has, has uh, been transferred to the molecular gas. So this is the so project we did. We, this is, this is uh, the, the quantum plot of the H2 line emission that we observed with the iron tautometer and the CO. And this was, this was a hard observation to do because the line is actually very broad. So this is the, and the first time we went to the telescope, we could not take the line because uh, the bandwidth of the, of the receiver was not large enough. And when we, when we uh, went back to the new receiver, uh, we discovered these lines which are 1,000 kilometers per second wide. Right? So you, you find today in the kinematics of the molecular gas all of the range of velocities which were in the initial shock of the collision. So actually most, most of the kinetic energy of the collision has not dissipated, it has been transferred Molecular gas. So not, not only you have formed molecular gas, but this, this molecular gas is now holding uh, most of the energy of the system. So there is more energy, kinetic energy in the molecular gas than there is uh, thermal energy in the plasma. So, how does this envisage physically? So, um, a shock is created, and the temperature of the shock is going to be high. So, is this a post shock kind of mediation downstream? Is that how do you get to molecular hydrogen? I'm not quite sure what the scenario is. Is yeah, that what I'm going to in the throwing? Oh, you're going to unveil this. Uh, what, what could be, what, how we see things like that? Okay, okay. This is exactly the question. Uh, so was, this was my um, former PhD students' work, PhD work. Uh, like, yeah, when we, we were, this, this was our main question. How we can you explain that there is so much H2 and how the transfer of the energy? And I think so, uh, not all of the questions are clear. Uh, clear. Uh, this, uh, we, uh, it must involve some kind of turbulent energy cascade, but uh, the details of this uh, are hard to be. Do you see higher CO transitions? Uh, we, uh, the, the, we have observed also the CO32 line, and the excitation of this gas is actually uh, not so strong. Probably, it's probably, uh, uh, I'll come back in, in the whole system, but this gas is probably not very dense. And, and that's where C plus would be a critical test. <coughs> you have an idea just of the finish factor from the excitation you get the of density. So compared to the average density. Oh ah, yeah, it's very, uh, those, those lines are very fine, so it's very small. But we have now uh, yeah, obtained the uh, interferometric observations and, and we see uh, giant complexes a bit like in the in the antenna manager. We we see some there are some uh, with the interferometer. We're surprised to resolve all, all along this we resolve uh, the big complexes. Are, uh, very similar to the one which I'm going to take. So one more question, what is the CO the H2 of the X factor? We don't know, so, so we are trying yeah, to, right? yeah. Uh, so I think it's very difficult, but the, uh, what, uh, the way we approach this is that we have also, also observed now with uh, Spire, we have, we have detected the dust emission from this, yeah. and, and if you compare, uh, if you use the dust, the normal dust gas mass ratio, the, it looks like the XCO factor within a factor of a few is not very different from the usual. So, uh, so this is a bit, uh, not very good picture yet, but this is a bit the, con the context now uh, and what we are going to use to the model. Uh, this is the H1 picture of this, of this, uh, of this uh, group and there is this big tight on the arm at the velocity of the group. Which, and there is this uh, big, uh, big H1 which is coming from the intruder at, at, at the, with a velocity difference of 900 kilometers per second. And the shock is in this box here. And, and uh, 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 this is where most of the molecular gas is. And there is no H1 anymore. All of the gas, uh, uh, the diffuse gas, until that is probably ionized and will be integrated to the big shock. But the, so the big surprise is that there is no H1, but actually most of the mass is in the molecular. Most of the gas mass. So this is a uh, this, this is a bit of the picture we, we started with. So at the, at the end, the, the, I think the, solu the solution is that when you when you collide like this two I, two ISM on galactic scales, 
you have to realize that the ISM is not is not like a solid body. It's uh, you you have a very numerous uh, medium which are penetrating each other, and and that the, the the collision the collision speed is already the shock speed only in the very low uh, very thin uh, ISM. Uh, and that, that the, the clouds themselves uh, are not going to feel uh, shocks which are that strong. Because uh, if you have a shock at, at 1,000 km a second, you destroy all of the dust, you, you, you create a hot plasma, and uh, it's very hard to reform H2 because we don't have uh, any, any dust to, for surface reaction. So this is the idea of that, that basically the, the, the shock will go at high speed, and there will be two shocks going through each of the of the incoming gas flows, and, and that, the, and that, that the, the, the shock which will be transmitted into the, into the clouds uh, will be uh, smaller uh, than, than the main speed, and, and this is, will be related to the, to the, uh, the density contrast. And basically, we are, uh, in a simple approximation, we can say that the uh, row, uh, the density V squared uh, is, is preserved. So you get basically uh, the denser the, pla the cloud is, the, the, the smaller the velocity will be. And for, for uh, so we did we did the uh, microphysics uh, modeling of this, including, including the evolution of the dust. And uh, what I'm going to show you is that we can form molecular gas like this uh, uh, quite quite easily within within the few millimeters. So let me understand the model. So. Um Shock comes in and it's um, hitting an inhomogeneous mm -hmm. medium, and so the idea is that some of it's racing forward and the other one's sort of wrapping yeah. around and having compression. And at the same time, so you create this turbulence because basically, uh, probably this is also fragmenting at the same time. It's a very violent uh, process. And, and what would be the density contrast of the lumps that uh, you, you actually you need uh, even a very low density because you have a halo, so I don't think the density are very high. Uh, of uh, are sufficient. If you have a density, your efficient density larger than 0.1, you will be able to form a, a molecular cloud within a few million years. The, the area of collision is so how to move that cluster? What do you mean? The because you're saying you have a so the way we did the model, we did not. We were not trying to do a global budget. What we, to, what we did is that we, we basically use the, the cloud the cloud density as a parameter, and and we we follow the uh, energetics and the, the dust the dust uh, abundance and the, uh, the, 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 the chemistry and to the after recombination the molecular chemistry of uh, the volume of gas, which will be kept at, at a constant pressure, which will be the pressure of the ambient uh, medium, the, set by the, the hot plasma. Uh, and we, so we follow the, the time evolution of the volume of gas at a given pressure. It's a very, so it's a, it's a very cooling. And at the same time, we follow the, the dust content. And at the end, uh, I'll show you where we don't, we don't really necessarily make, make a budget. But, but at the end, uh, we, we can tell you that all of the all of the gas which was at, at, at density larger than 0.1 has uh, can, uh, will be turned to molecular gas by, by after a few million years. So basically, the fact that we find today that most of the molecular uh, of most most of the gas is molecular today means that most of the gas was in the wrong phase to start with, and that this is a, a reasonable assumption. So this is the physical modeling we did. Now we, we we introduced those, those processes and the, the dust dust patterning, the, the cooling curve of the uh, plasma, and and, uh, and once uh, the gas recombines, we include also uh, molecular, molecular formation and the molecular molecular hydrogen cooling. And and so you have in this you have three time scales, which depends on, on the initial gas density, which sets the shock velocity. And and uh, we, we assume for simplicity, as if it's a turbulent medium, there will be a range of pressure that we assume for simplicity that there is a fixed uh, pressure of the X-ray gas. So is the H2 formed on this model? In this model, yeah, because we if if I, uh, because we did we did some some calculations where we, we don't include uh, dust, and then the problem is that in the gas phase, uh, the formation efficiency is not uh, large enough. So you, you form some molecular gas, but you 
you can never, never get to the stage where most of the gas is molecular like we, like we are doing. So we need to keep the dust. Yes? Yes, I don't understand why you consider only electrons without protons and the shock. Uh, in the, in the dust, dust pattering? Yeah. Because uh, at this temperature, this is the most efficient process. And the, the hot electrons uh, are, are carry, have a much higher velocity and they are more efficient at uh, sputtering the dust. So the, prot the protons become more efficient at much higher temperature. This plasma is only 5 million uh, degrees. The, the protons become dominant sputtering process uh, at temperatures uh, of several 10 to, 10 to the 7 uh, degree Kelvin. So, so the sputtering occurs because the hot electrons mm -hmm. penetrate so much, they heat it up, and it's almost like an evaporation. Yeah, they, they take an atom away. They, 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 uh, that's a sputtering process. Oh, they don't heat up, they actually knock. Not not like the dust brain? What is it like the back? It's not a It's got more of the EV energy. So you're saying electrostatics? No, they can do It's like, it's like cratering. It's not a electron. No, no, it's ejecting electrons. Yeah, the electron is ejecting one at a time. Yeah. Right, ejecting electrons. And that's, that has been well documented because uh, what's People who worked on the, on the when the X-ray observations of plasma developed, people who were concerned about this because they, they wanted to know what the, where the elements of the, uh, the elements into the, into the plasma, and they, they try it. And also, if dust survives the hot plasma, it becomes rapidly the main cooling agent. agent. So it was a main question for them, and they developed also these uh, uh, experiments and, mod and modeling, which we used in this process. But uh, as soon as your your plasma has a temperature more than a million degree. Uh, the destruction time of the dust is becomes shorter than the cooling time of the plasma. So you, uh, as soon as you heat the gas above a million degree, you will lose the dust before the plasma is able to cool. So this is a well established result, in which it fits with the fact that when you do now spectroscopy of that plasma, you always find uh, uh, solar metallicity for all the elements. You don't have dust you have a question, George? Yeah, I have a question. And what you are talking about is uh, shock in a Tesla medium, which is outside from the air, right? In this case, yeah. Yeah, isn't it also possible that you have molecular clouds in front of the shock, or only down from the shock, and then you surround the molecular clouds by very hot, thin gas? So the, this was the question. So if I understand your question, is whether some of the molecular gas we see there was pre shock and uh, this is, uh, I think, let's, let me come back to the argument we have against this is uh, our spectra. Is that uh, in, in this in this spectra we use we see uh, the, the pressure velocity uh, uh, that those of the H one outside of the shock, and uh, a lot of the gas, a lot of the molecular emission is at intermediate velocities. So a lot of gas has been slowed that slowed down. So I think this is more readily explained if you reform. Uh, from diffuse gas, which has been uh, decelerated by the shock. If you have a very massive cloud, it will, uh, it will be like a ballet, and it will, it will not be stopped over such a short time, because uh, its uh, stopping length is much, it's much larger than, than, than uh, its stopping time is much larger than the age of the shock. I think we cannot exclude that some of the some of the molecules will be pressure, but a lot of it has been reformed. Uh, from post-shock gas. So the argument is, uh, is uh, kinetic. But I'm assuming that basically the magnetic field is not enough to keep the clouds together with the rest of the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a question of the inertia in, in, in the region. But it's clearly a, 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 a question mm -hmm. uh, which, which, uh, which we have to keep in mind. So, so I think we go back to the dust suffering by the electrons. But so what do you do? You calculate a um, uh, some electron potential, or sorry, uh, uh, chemical potential or something on the surface, and then the electron delivers the energy, and if you get bigger than that, and then you lose the atom. And so that's the process, and is it's highly stochastic. Is that the way it's actually calculated? No, there is a, there is a, the way the model is done. There is a yield. So 
at each collision, depending on, depending on the temperature of the electron, you have the lead probability to be able to take out the metal. And so this is not controversial from a physics point of view. Um, if people do Monte Carlos, for example, that would be an nice way to see the energy level of the, mic the microphysics part of it, yeah. uh, that I, I don't know the, 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 the way the way it is modeled is uh, uh, it's just a simple lead uh, as a, which is function of temperature. The, the way the, the microphysics uh, was, was tested uh, probably includes some uh, laboratory experiments. And at the end, the astrophysical test is uh, the spectroscopy of that transformer where you do find that the test is very uh, distorted. This is, this is uh, in this week, we already only used what was available, and which had been developed uh, many years ago, and this is, these questions were addressed in the 80s. Like, uh, the first, I think, paper was by Ken, and such is very effective. It may have been even those trends to this. At the end, you see, this is, this is what, what, I, what, I, what I'm coming from. Right? This, this process, they will fix a, a time scale, and, and which depends on the post shock temperature of the gas, which is related to the pre shock uh, density. Right? And the, you have, uh, this, this, this is the uh, dust lifetime. And you see that the, uh, there is a, the lead has a, has a very strong uh, cutoff. At uh, about a million degree Kelvin. We know that the electrons don't, don't have enough energy to, to destroy the, the, binding, the binding of the atom in the solid. And so you basically, as soon as, you, as, soon as the gas uh, is heated to temperatures larger than a million degree, you lose your dust. And, and if you lose your dust, you cannot, you cannot uh, reform uh, electron gas. So uh, uh, this, this gas will be. Even if it had time to cool and, uh, and, and become neutral, it will stay at the lead. Why? So to, to form molecules, not only you have to keep the dust, but you have, have, have had enough time to cool it and for the dust needs to be dense enough. Uh, because at the same time, the pressure density fixes the uh, post shock density, so it fixes the, 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 the cooling time and the true formation time scale. So you really get molecular formation shown only in this region of the diagram. But the, the density, the pressure density which you need are not very uh, high, so it, it's quite reasonable. You can expect that most of the gas, which was in the wrong phase to stop the So, how much mass are we talking about in all, compared say, the mass of the stars and the, the galaxies? How much uh, in, yeah. in, in, the, in the halo here, in, in, this, in this chart, there's a, there's about a, a few times to the line of solar masses of gas, so it's as much gas. As much molecular gas as there is in the Milky Way, and uh, which I think was uh, produced by this uh, by this shock, and it is uh, it is produced because it is a necessary agent of the dissipation. It, 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 uh, the, the, the fact that you create a, uh, you bring this energy, you, you bring this gas compression, which triggers the formation of molecules, and then the molecules become so your cooling agent to. Uh, so you have an external pressure and you have a characteristic temperature for the nanos. What's the mass in hot gas? The mass in hot gas is, is a fact, more than a factor of 10 lower than the one in the hot gas. So, uh, so this is the hot plasma. Is what the, what the, I think the, the, the hot plasma today was already a hot plasma to start with. Because at the end, you, you need the density, density, the pressure densities, which are characteristic of the hot plasma. So the, 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 the hot plasma pressure today is higher than it was in the, in the pressure gas, but most of the, the, the mass uh, which is in the, in the hot plasma today is very close to what it was in the Yes? I think we are not talking about sparkling about anything, but by ion. No, for the dust it's by electrons. Because no, it's ion. It's hydrogen and helium. Higher temperatures, you say, it's ion. Uh, it's protons and I, uh, ions only at higher temperatures. Mm -hmm. yes. So, before this shock comes about, there's the dust. And that dust is going to be formed somewhere. And it's going to be formed in the galaxy by stars? 
Yeah, because uh, the gas, uh, you want on one side you have a galaxy, on the other side you have matter which was brought by tidal interaction from the disk to the halo. So the, this gas which is today in the halo in this environment is not, uh, uh, it's not gas which is coming from the intergalactic medium, it's coming actually from the galactic disk, it was just brought by the, by the dynamical interaction of galaxies into the halo. So there must be a lot of shock during the yeah, but not, not as violent as this one. This one is, uh, is much, much more violent because it, this, uh, this two galaxies, this galaxy intruder is not part of the group. It's actually not a balanced system. It's, uh, it's, it's a chance uh, encounter between two systems which are not very actually balanced. It is, uh, in this case, the interaction velocity is very high. But if you look at most tidal tails, you see them in each one gas. So they're not particularly common. Well, that's, I, that's my point is that isn't it believed that galaxies destroy in not in each one gas. Not, not each, not in, uh, you need quite uh, high speed shock. You need to, to read oh, this uh, million degree uh, temperature, so you need shocks of, of at least uh, several hundred kilometers. In, in this picture, yeah. yeah. Okay. You're saying in ISM, that is not destroyed. Yeah. By supernova, those are high velocity shocks. They're just Well, HD stars. No. That's not really. So, Francois, you've got a, a model Yeah, it oh. takes time. As you see, this is this is more or less the age, the dynamical age of the shot, and it takes at least uh, a few million years to so it's, it's that dot dash line you're saying is the H2 gas mass, right? It's, it's right. not the mass, it's, it, is, uh, it is in this range of parameter right. space that we, we form H2. And what are, the, so what are you plotting on that dot dash line? This is, uh, this is time, and so this is the age today of the shot. So the, the, the shock started uh, a few million years ago. Yes, yeah, so but you got the H2 formation one, right? Yes, uh, this so one, yeah. Yeah, and so what's, what's on the... Do you, that's the H2 formation time is going up, you're saying. Yeah, because of the, the pressure density is smaller, so the gas density of the pressure gas is smaller. But what you're showing is the outcome. It's no longer it is the 5 degrees or 10 degrees. No, no, yeah, this is, this is the post shock temperature just, at the, uh, right. just after the shock. After that, the gas is the uh, stuff you're seeing is 3,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What actually cools it? So it, it's, uh, at the beginning, it's, uh, it, it's uh, pretty nice of the plasma, and then you have uh, the, uh, the lime and alpha cooling, and then the, when, when the gas is neutral, you have the O1, O1 dilution, and then I'm going to come to this because all of these lines were actually observed. So, uh, so most of the energy impact is not down by the more Yeah, that's that's still uh, an open an open question. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 like in, in, a, in the ASM galaxy, you have, you have plasma, you have ionized gas, you have raw H1. I've added this small molecular hydrogen because it's a, it's a very clean uh, uh, channel. And there is a cold molecular gas. And, uh, and <coughs> at the end, all of, the, all of this, uh, you, you cascade, you, this is a colder gas, this is a hotter gas. And, and uh, each time to cool down, you, meet, you need to emit photons. And, and those photons are created. Uh, observe them in the system like this. There are, uh, there are uh, characteristic cooling lines which correspond to each transition. Uh, as here it's modified J. This is the O1 line. It's not the unique one, but it's one which is luminous enough and which, which we can observe and, and model. Here it's the uh, alpha and here it's X-ray. And, and in, the, in the simple picture of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the energy transfer, you, you will start the uh, hot, the hot and this and this, and so you have like a shower when you go down like this. But, but this is not what, uh, the observation cannot be explained like this. You need to have this uh, cycling of, of mass. You need, to, you need to go continuously to go up and, and come down. There, there is a, it's like a fountain. 
and, and uh, this fontaine is, this, is exactly this process of turbulent energy cascade, which involves uh, many shocks at different velocities and which continuously reheat uh, the gas, which explains why today most of the energy of the collision has not yet dissipated. It's still, it's still present in the uh, kinetics of, of, of the gas. And, and, and so when, when, you, when you look at this cooling line, actually you can, you can uh, quantify the mass flow. The mass flow and uh, today, uh, the X-ray gas uh, is not cooling significantly, so the, this, uh, this transition is not occurring. Uh, uh, the, recombination, uh, the recombination rate is about 100 solar masses per year, but, but the, the mass flow rate you need to explain the molecular hydrogen emission is, uh, is uh, 60 times higher. So have a much more, much more gas circulating in this part of the diagram than, than, than here. And, and, and the cooling time, which I both also vary a lot. If, if you, the cooling time of the molecular gas is only 20,000 years. You need to reheat this every 20,000 years to maintain the, the, the constant mass of this, in this reservoir. And while, while the plasma has a cooling time which is, uh, of 10 to the 8 years, so a lot, a lot of time scales are, are being involved. And, and, and how you model this cooling will, will give the answer to your question. And it's possible that actually uh, 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 this, this cooling through, uh, from the ionized gas is actually the dominant cooling. And this is, uh, is, uh, right now, the HR5 luminosity is, is smaller than the molecular ion luminosity. But if this is, if, if this is shock power, uh, there are many more brighter cooling lines in the UV, which will make the volumetric correction quite high. And it could be so that uh, uh, the, actual, the actual power I did here is, uh, is uh, comparable or even larger than this. Uh, but it depends, it depends on, on the value. But, but at the end, the observations imply that we have to keep from this is that it implies a, a continuous uh, circulation of the gas through uh, this uh, mass reservoir. And this is uh, uh, part of, those, of this. Uh, energy cascade down to very small scale. So to, to account for the for the molecular ion emission, we need shocks which are about 10, 20 kilometers per second. This is uh, two hundred magnitudes smaller than the initial shock velocity. So uh, maybe I have to a little bit. I want to say a little bit on the other part, which is uh, so, uh, so the pro the first part Story. And we have we have more uh, observations to go, and we, we make progress in our understanding of the of the dynamic state of the state of the gas. But at the same time, we we, uh, we were interested in, in, in another aspect of this. It is uh, the star formation because we have molecular gas in those objects which I've shown you, uh, uh, especially in the Stefan's quintet. There is no star form. There is no or very little star formation. But uh, eventually there is molecular gas, and this molecular gas we lose its, its, uh, its uh, uh, turbulent energy, and we uh, probably need to stop it. So this is a, 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 a link which we would like to, to understand. That's why I'm going to address these two, uh, two questions. And for that, I will use two, two, two different families of objects. Well, some, uh, some of the objects which, which have this very uh, Right, H2 emission are radio galaxies. And uh, this radio galaxy, the source of energy in the, in the radio galaxy is, is supposed to be the radio jet, which is uh, carrying a, a tremendous amount of power, and you need to, to deposit only uh, one, about 1% 1 of this power, this mechanical power, into the ASM of the galaxy to, to actually take account for the, for the line emission from, from, from the galaxy. So a very small coupling efficient coupling between the radio jet and the ISM of the galaxy uh, can, can account this for the energetics. And what, what was interesting in this radio galaxy is that uh, all of these radio galaxies uh, have molecular gas, uh, so they, uh, uh, some of them uh, more than in the Milky Way, but they have a very low uh, star formation rate. And this is where we, we compare the six galaxies, and this is something like the Schmidt chemical uh, diagram, so the, the normal sequence of star formation in, in normal galaxies, and all of these galaxies. Uh, are below. So the, somehow the uh, star formation is quenched and, and we want to understand why. So uh, I'm going to focus on one, one extreme object uh, which, is, which we have to do with uh, 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 symphony. So it's, a, it's 
it's a radio galaxy, so it, it's, it, 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 the, the object at the center of these two uh, giant radio lobes. And the, so the, the radio jet is actually power, powering these radio lobes, but it's also acting on the ISM in the galaxy. So when you zoom on this, that you actually have two galaxies, and, and only, only one is the uh, H2 molecular gas. And uh, so this, this galaxy has uh, several uh, times to the nine solar masses of gas, but it's not forming any stars. It's, uh, we don't see any infrared emission. It's forming, it's forming less, uh, less stars by uh, about an order of magnitude than the Milky Way. But it, it has a, a surface density of molecular gas, which is 10 times uh, the, 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 the Milky Way. But I think the, our, our view of this is that it is uh, similar to the Stefan Spitet. You have a, a, you, the jet is depositing a lot of mechanical energy. The outcome of this is that you create uh, molecular gas, but this, this molecular gas is too strong enough to form the uh, star. So, so the way the way we we study this and we, we were able to uh, resolve the, the H2 emission here, and we get uh, uh, measurements of the velocity dispersion which are very high. So the gas is very is very uh, turbulent. So that's 200 to 600 kilometers. Yeah. So, so it's not, it's not, it's not really this because uh, the, the ratio between the rotational velocity is sigma one. Right. And, and then what's that size? So the, the size is here is about five kilopascals. Okay, so similar in size to the Milky Way yeah. gas, but it's got a spatial yeah. yeah. So the numbers of this is nowhere near self gravity. No. Yeah. I would phrase it that way rather than saying in terms of the star formation, because gravity doesn't. Yeah, it's basically, this is, a, this is a typical way to, to see it, but basically you are in a regime where the, the dynamics is completely turbulent and dominated, so you, you don't, uh, gravity is not able to, at no scale to take uh, control of the gas. Uh, and uh, the, way, the way we express this is that if you, uh, this is an observable, uh, so the, the ratio between the H2 and the density of the mass, and, and if, if this is powered by the turbulent energy cascade, you can actually uh, quantify uh, the velocity dispersion as a function of size. Yeah. And, and you, obviously, to, these objects are so extreme that you need a much higher velocity dispersion than in the Milky Way. Yeah. And it's normal because you have uh, so much more energy which is available to, to make your gas turbulent. And, and uh, uh, this is, so this, the observational constraints, uh, together with the measurements of the, of the turbulence on the large scale from the simple observation, tells you that, that the, the molecular uh, gas like our structures in this in this uh, in this galaxy should be within this, this band, and and you are here. Uh, so uh, over all these bands, this ratio, which is the ratio between the total kinetic energy and the gravity, is much larger than one. And this is the, of the super density of this, of this galaxy. And this is where the, the gravitational bomb clouds could be forming, and this is where clouds in the Milky Way are. And basically, all of, all of the clouds in this galaxy are very turbulent and uh, but not in the state where they can form gravity bond structures which will form the top. So uh, this is, I see an illustration where we could form, when, when the turbulence becomes high, too high, uh, the gas cannot form stars because it just cannot form bound systems. And, and this is very uh, similar to, uh, to what we are studying with, uh, with Marcotton and the uh, Peter, if you look at this uh, nearby uh, molecular clouds, uh, this, this is one uh, example of Marco Fan has studied uh, Polaris, which is seen here by IRAS here with uh, Herschel. Uh, this, this cloud is completely dominated by turbulence. Okay. And all the structures here, here, here are not gravitationally bound. It's not forming, uh, it's not forming stars. Uh, and, uh, but it's compared to, to the other galaxy, it's much lower polar density. But now you have to imagine that to scale this up, you have an, an environment where the, the amount of energy which is available to, to, to steer around the gas is much larger. So you can create an environment like this, but, but with much higher surface density. So you can, you can have uh, even dark clouds, which have, are two turbulence to form, to, form, uh, to form stars. This is, this is a bit of the, the idea we, 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 are, we are suggesting. And, uh, I'm going to, to finish, I'm going to so show... What's V of the CS for the V? Uh, the factor of the field? Yeah. 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 And um, can you say anything about how it fluctuates? 
you mean you, over, you, over this area? It's yeah, are you going, uh, you know, uh, supersonic, subsonic, supersonic, subsonic, fusion, or is it? The well, I, I don't know the answer to that, but it's close to it's close to are, are it's close to the solid. way that it's trying to. It, 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 I mean, you're describing it as a turbulent cascade with you know the reservoir of sink, but another way to try and do it is to make shock to try and uh, lower the fees. That is not happening. No, I've seen the shocks that's empowering the mothers. Is this like nitrogen now? Yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's turbulent. I mean, no, we have to think of what it's actually doing. No, but the, so it's turbulent <laughs> generated shocks that are short distance relative to the overall scale of the medium. And is that the phenomenon? They are certainly occurring. So I don't know what you mean by object of phenomenon. Well, the phenomenon being that the system is trying to solve its energetic problem. And it's got a big velocity that's smacked in at the beginning. That's his and, whole argument. Yes. 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 And yeah. no, but the issue is that uh, I thought you were describing it as backflows and all sorts of things. But instead, when he's describing it as uh, uh, turbulence that's hitting each other and making shots. I think it's got in the Chris Fathom's quintet. Yeah, shot to okay. well, 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 shot. But, the but in the, the galaxy he's showing, it's continuously carved by a radio jet. It's, you have a continuous so, yeah, but, this is, but this is very different. This yeah. is a very different situation. This is, this is more like a That's in the galaxy. So that's, that's in the shell. So this was, the energy was here pro probably provided by something which blew a shell, which is about 20 percent in size. And we see the slow dissipation of this. This was stirred once. It was no, no, it's right. Okay, but looking at this with the uh, view, of, you know, Mockham is a few. Can you point to a short distance shot there? No, I think this. Uh, uh, we don't, I'm not sure that the, the dissipation is actually occurring in shot. This is good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is that what you want to hear? No, that's <laughs> what I was trying to get. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that's what you were getting at, yeah. the solution to the energy crisis. Well, no, the, the shock is just a way yeah. to, to, to give a description of the dissipation, but it's probably not what is really happening. Okay. Uh, but still, uh, yes, you have a you like a thing in the, you're not a person, you that. You're so basically you want that to shock. Ah, let's see. Okay, so the other thing. All, all the clouds, which are all from the top. <laughs> Just a quick question, uh, how do you define gravitational bound or not? I mean, also the lot of small scale structure. I think also probably the idea of substructure, which is gravitational bound. Yeah, we, uh, the idea is always people, at the first order, we use this parameter. And the idea that turbulence, since turbulence just gathers things, doesn't change much uh, the surface density of the gas. It, it brings it, you can bring things together, but, uh, but but the miracle relations show that it doesn't very much. So uh, you can basically take the mean value of the cloud, and this uh, will give you as a function of velocity dispersion. Will give you, uh, so you need, a, you need to plug in the relation between sigma d and r. And it gives you, for a given level of turbulence, it gives you the, the values of this condition. And in, uh, this, cl this cloud of Marcon is completely uh, turbulence dominated but by big factor, by the, uh, I think 100. I think the, the kinetic energy of the gas is 100 times larger than the gravitational binding energy. How precisely can you map out the velocity? So, you know, That's well, it's just in, a, in, it's in the brighter area of this, in this field. We don't have we don't have velocity field over the Well, we do in H1 at the very low resolution, but at the resolution of the energy system, right? Yeah, the velocity and propagation on the brightest points. Uh, yeah, but what is going to be feasible in terms of mapping out gradients? Because that seems to be the key to the dynamics. I mean, all these calculations you see every you know, one, you know, one, seven, one, seven, seven, nine, one, 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 we have, they, we have a very good, system. we have, we have uh, good quality data and high resolution data uh, with the H1, but most of, not, most of the contents that you see is not just not the contents. So we don't have a full picture right, at the resolution we would like for the way to compose it. But Alma would be Yeah, but Alma would, if you were also, it would be difficult to 
not the whole thing. Yeah, it's, it's, all all fit, fit, fit. It's, it's, it's at the end. So, of, the so answer to your question is statistical. Your question, I, I don't know when we'll have this information. Mm -hmm. I would love to be able to get the the full dynamics and kinematics of this cloud and the resolution of a uh, 10, 15 arc second, which is the resolution of the okay. so I don't think so you can't do something similar. So you can't. Yeah. Not right away, but later on when you can map the whole. So, to show you how beautiful the data is, I'm going to focus on this uh, 
uh, the, the gas which is uh, there, the interaction between the two components somehow leads to terminal energy dissipation. And as you dissipate energy, you are forming a, you are forming a cloud which will become a non-trivial cloud. And, and uh, here we quantify the accretion rate which is needed to explain the dissipation energy, and we find that it's about uh, 10, uh, uh, 10 solar masses per year. And uh, in this case, the answer is about the same because if, if we want to form a cloud which is cut to the seven solar masses, we need to get the So the initial time scales are in both cases very short. Okay. So it, I think this is, will be an example where, where you, uh, star formation is really occurring where the energy dissipation is happening at that stage. So I think it has been a bit long. Uh, but, uh, I would like to say that there are several perspectives of this of different kinds. And we, we talked about it again. And we, are, we, we are much to learn still about the physical and dynamic state of the gas. And, and for that, we, we have programs with Russia and Myanmar. Uh, obviously, we, uh, this, this phenomenon uh, is uh, ISM physics, which occurs in all environments. And we, and we should explore, uh, explore the, the, the different environments. I have highlighted objects, objects which are extreme, but I think the same physics occurring everywhere. And I think uh, one of the things I've been discussing with Jean-Claude over, over the last week is that eventually uh, this should lead to some kind of phenomenological model where we can account for the gas energetics within uh, uh, the of that condition. I think this is really interesting to do. And I thank you. Uh, to, this is probably the main, the main idea that I tried to present. Thank you. Thanks, Francois. Uh, there has been already a lot of questions. I don't know if uh, anyone wants to uh, ask something more. I'll be here until Thursday uh, afternoon. So uh, I'll be happy to talk to you about the more questions. Okay. Well, thank, thanks again. Thank you.